Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to have a little chat with you about a story. This is a story I heard while I was doing a customer's hair in the salon about 10 or 12 years ago. This story stuck with me so I used it in one of my sermons. And I just asked the Lord what I should talk about and that story popped in my head. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Well, sometimes I go with scripture and sometimes I feel led to talk from my heart. Then there are other times I feel like God wants me to use stories as object lessons in our lives because people learn from different types of teaching. People learn in different ways. I'm one of those people that will learn by you showing me. If I have to sit there and read it all, I'm done. But you talk to me, you show me, oh, I'm going to get it like that. Well, this is a story. And this is a story about three kids. And this is for adults. It's not just for little kids. It's for adults. Because the object lesson in here is obedience, period. All right. There were two brothers and a sister. They were raised by their father. They lived in the country. This happens to be a true story. They live in a country. And here's, here's the trip. The father, he's got to go into town to buy some supplies. So he tells his children, you make sure you do not go outside and play. I want all three of you to stay in this house. Do you hear me? Now, what did I say? That's right. Stay in the house. Now, what did I, did you hear what I said? All right. Stay in the house. Do not go out for anything. Don't answer the door for anybody. And y'all better not catch you near that riverbank. Well, I mean, he hadn't even got the smoke out of, out of the <laughs> long driveway. And those boys were scheming and conniving. They're getting their trunks on and they're getting ready to go run out to the riverbank. So they don't tell the sister. They just say, come on, let's go take a walk. And she's saying, well, daddy said we're not supposed to. Oh, shut up. You're just such a big mealy mouth. Come on here. So she reluctantly goes with them. She's the youngest maybe four or five. And the boys are maybe around six and nine or 10 years old. Well, the older brother, you know, twists the arms of the younger, of, of his younger siblings and they head toward the riverbank. Oh yeah, they head toward the riverbank. Now dad's gonna be in, in, in town for a minute. He's not just going to be around the corner. Town is a little ways off. So they take this nice little stroll to the riverbank, running it sometimes, walking it sometimes. Oh, they're so excited. Woo! And they are champion swimmers. So, you know, they got it going on. And they get to the riverbank and they clown with each other a little bit. And it's really fun. Finally, they can't hold it back any longer. They've got to go in. So they get ready to jump into the riverbank. Mm -hmm. And the water's a little rougher than they expected, but they're, they're doing all right. Well, the, the big brother is the one that, that jumps in because he was the one that really wanted to go. And uh, he's having a ball. The next thing you know, a couple of currents start welling up in that water, and before you know it, he can't he can't control himself because the current is too strong for him, and he's hollering help help. And his little brother, he's a champion swimmer too, so he dives in to save his brother. You can picture what happened, can't you? They both drown. Now, the father told them to stay in. Oh, here was the part I forgot to tell you. This is the key to the whole story. You think that's bad. Check this out. The boy threatened the girl. 
And he said, you better not tell. I don't care what you do. You better not tell. I will never talk to you or play with you again. You better not tell. Oh, I mean, he, he needles her bad. But, but dad says, no, no, no. You better not tell. <laughs> she didn't tell. So she's standing there looking. She, she's too young. She can't get out there and do anything. So she runs back to the house. Dad's putting his stuff up in the house. He just got in the door. And she runs in and she runs to her bedroom because she can't tell. Timing is of the essence now. Pops is wondering you know, where the boys is. They're not supposed to be outside playing. She's, you know, mom is the word. She runs to the bathroom. She goes in the bedroom. He's looking at her. He's just acting awfully strange. Come here, girl. Why are you acting like that? She won't say a word. Finally, the tears start oozing out of her eyes because she just can't contain it anymore. She knows what happened. She saw it. And the father, when he heard all oh, the horror, he runs out, jumps in that truck and and barrels down the road to the to the uh to the riverbank. And he's looking and he's hollering and he's running down trying to find where he can find his his sons and he's taking his shirt off, getting ready to jump in, and he sees a body. So he runs and slides down that hill, runs in there, and he, he tries to, to see if he could revive Ed, that he could tell they had been dead too long. Then he finds the other body. Both sons drown. The deadliest swim of their life because of one act of disobedience. What price are you willing to pay? What are you willing to lose? Whose lives are you willing to mess up forever because of your willingness to disobey God's ways? How many babies are you gonna bring into the world and not father because you're so willing not to obey? God's ways. It's going to be your way or the highway because you got to get your groove on. And she has to understand you're not down for no commitments. You don't, you know, homie don't play commitment. Homie just plays nookie, but not commitment. So you tell the ladies who are going to church, well, you know, the Bible says man not supposed to let his semen fall on the ground. It got to go somewhere now. I mean, you play all those little silly head games with silly, desperate women. And you silly, desperate women keep going for the okie doke. What is up with that? And you both disobey. Together. Don't stay together, but you disobey together. And then along comes baby. And you got an 18, 20 year jail sentence. You were free. You ain't free no more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you're mad at the child. I'm talking consequences, uh, domino effect. You're mad at the child. The child looks like the daddy. The daddy's gone because he's he's playing. He got too many other skirts to venture into. You know, yours is old stuff. So, you know, old hat. You know, you got to go explore new territory, new horizons. Yeah. In the meantime, your child goes fatherless. You're just about penniless because you can't afford to take care of you and a child. So you mad at the child. Because the child, in your mind, ruined your life. The child didn't do anything. It was your act of disobedience. So you can make this good or you can make it bad. You can make the child's life miserable and punish her or him 
for the rest of their lives. Or you could turn it around and love them with all the love you can muster up, knowing it was your doing that brought them here. So, what prices are you willing to pay? And you teenagers who just got to give it a try. You got to take that little swig. You got to, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you get that little thing, you scoop it up and you, you know I mean, you're scraping it on the table, making sure you get it right, putting the straw to your nose. I mean, come on, you don't need it. You're just doing it because somebody else is doing it. Monkey see, monkey do. The shoe fits, put it on, baby. Ah, I feel like I'm whooping some tails today. I don't mean to be fussing, I really don't. But it's just so sad to see how many people have to suffer. You know, it's not only you. You always say, well, it's none of their business. Why don't they stay out of my business? Why does, you know, does mama have to be on my back? Why does dad always have to? You, you know what? You could say that till the cows come home. While you're out there playing the fool, spinning your wheels, getting nowhere fast. But let me tell you something. When along comes baby, guess who's going to be stuck taking care of that baby so you can finish high school? The person who has done their job, they've taken care of their kids. They're done. They don't, they, they don't want to start all over again with another burden. But you parted your legs. And now they have to pay the price because they have too much heart than to send that child elsewhere or, or throw them to the system. You're doing, but they're the ones paying, paying the consequence. For your doing. They're giving up their freedoms. They're giving up their pleasures. Their joys. Their, if you have both parents. That's a blessing. Okay. But guess what? It's not a blessing to them. When they got to raise another child. It's an expense. It's a burden. They can't lean back and take it easy a little bit. No. They got to dig in. And sometimes get a second job. Because they got another mouth to feed. And they got to start all this all over again when it's their time to live now. But no, they have too much heart. They love you too much, even though you weren't thinking about them. And still aren't thinking about them because you get an attitude when they get tired. And it's your baby. That baby belongs to you. It came from, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to be cool because I can go there. Yeah, that came from you, baby. Mama didn't open her legs. You did. She didn't go for the okie doke. She's married. You did. And the sad part is that child is going to grow up feeling unwanted by you. And I've heard too many people say, I'm real close to my grandmother. My grandmother's more like my mother. Well, that's real fine for grandma. Grandma doesn't get to live her life. Grandma's got to barrel down and start working like a young woman again. When grandma's tired. But she can't afford to be tired now, can she? Because you keep popping them legs open. You see, that's what I'm saying. You don't think about consequences. And you men, oh my goodness, you men, you chase this skirt, you chase that skirt. Oh, I like the way them boobs look. Oh, I got to get a handful of that. And you just nut up here and nut up there and nut up everywhere. And you never think about the pain you're causing that young lady when she realizes you are nowhere to be found when it's time to get down and dirty raising that child. Of yours. And you sit up there telling her, well, it's no proof it's my baby. She's probably, she was probably a virgin when you got her. Because you talked nonsense and had her believe in you really cared. 
you knew you didn't. Just marking up brownie points and 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 uh, uh, marks on your belt so you can brag to your buddies, brag and lie, brag, and sit up there and laugh about it. And you have a child from your loins, from you, growing up, and you're nowhere to be found. What damage are you willing to pay? Or have you gotten so callous, you really don't give a darn? I mean, you could care less if that baby drowned or died today or tomorrow because you really have no heart. What is it with that? Okay, lecture number two is over now, because all I'm going to do is keep fussing, and I know you guys are like, I don't want to hear it, talk to the hand, hello, okay, I'll talk to the hand, maybe one day the Lord will take that hand and pop you upside your head. So that you finally start hearing with your ears down to your heart. Give your heart to the Lord and really see what it's like when he changes your selfishness to selflessness. And he changes your narcissism into love for someone else. God bless you to get saved. God bless you to know God. And God bless you to be changed by God. Give your heart to the Lord as early as you can. There are too many years that can be wasted in prison, in jails. Oh, okay. I'm going to shut up. God bless you. I'm done.